Here's a couple of problems on simplifying expressions using laws of exponents. And uh, let's look at this first one. So this expression sits a quotient, and then we've got some various powers inside of powers. Let's see what we need to do here. Well, and if you have a expression parentheses to a power, then all of the things inside get raised to that power. And so we're going to get 9 to the 3 halves and then x to the fourth to the three halves. I'm going to do this out in, in more steps than you probably would do once you get, uh, once you re-familiarize yourself with this. Um, and then similarly here, both of these expressions here are going to be to the one-third power. So that's x to the sixth to the one-third, and then y to the minus three, ooh, to the minus three, to the one-third, okay. And now, let's see, 9 to the 3 halves. Now, there's two ways to do that. There's two ways to do that. Um, you could take 9 cubed and then take the square root, because remember, the 1 half means a square root. But that's silly, because 9 cubed is a big number. And you, there's another way to do it. You can take 9 to the 1 half, which is the square root, and then cube it. Okay. So it's the square root of 9 cubed. Now, you can probably guess what that is already. Oh, this is always gonna, all going to be inside a fraction but I'm just showing the steps. Okay, now, x to the fourth to the three halves. This is a crucial rule of exponents. When you have repeated exponentiation, the exponents multiply. Now, it's in that other video. I talked about why that's true. And so, four times three halves is six. So that's just x to the sixth. Similarly, y to the sixth to the three halves. Six times three halves is nine. So we've used that rule of exponents. Now, on the bottom, six times one-third is just two. And a minus 3 times 1 third is a minus 1. OK, so now let's just go ahead and simplify that. Uh, we'll just copy that, but I'll just simplify. That's just going to be 27 there. 3 to the third is 27. OK, now I've got, and actually, let's just bring that out in front, because it has nothing to do with the x's and y's. Now we need to remember how we divide exponents. x to the 6 divided by x to the 2. Well, let's really x multiply by itself six times, divided by two of them. Two of them cancel. Or in other words, six minus two is four. You subtract the exponents. So x to the fourth. Now this is a little tricky. It's nine minus a minus one. So that's going to be a y to the tenth. Let me show you one other way to, to do that. We could put, as an intermediate step, before we simplified anything else, we could say, you know, we, we really don't like negative powers in a denominator. Negative powers are about denominators. Putting them in a denominator is pretty silly. 1 over y to the minus 1. Well, this is 1 over y. Let's just replace that with a 1 over y here. We've got a 1 over y inside a denominator. 1 over 1 over something, that just turns into y. And so, in fact, that's just an extra y on the top. Now we could use the rule that, that's a y to the 1, let's put it as. We could use the rule that 9 plus 1, we're multiplying them, 9 plus 1 is 10. So certainly the most direct way is 9 minus a minus 1. But if that feels weird to you, what's kind of really going on is that we're dividing by 1 over y, which is the same thing as multiplying by y. OK, so there's a final answer. OK, let's do this one. It's pretty similar. OK, so now x to the fourth. Now I'm going to do it a little quicker. I'm going to combine these rules that anything inside parentheses gets raised to this power with the multiplication rule for exponents. So x to the 4 times 1 fourth, that's just x. OK, y to the 2 fourths, ooh, that's still a fractional power. So we're going to have to deal with that. Maybe that'll turn into a square root eventually. But let's simplify it first and put everything together first. Now, this is all to the minus 1. Ah, 2 to the minus 1, by definition, that's a half. Ooh, x to the minus 2 to the minus 1. That's rather like what I was talking about with the y up here. Those minus 2 and the minus 1 cancel, or they, they multiply to get x to the 2. Again. Well, I'll show you another way to do this in a second. This is probably the fastest way. I'll show you another way in a second. y to the minus 3 to the minus 1, that's y to the 3. OK, let me put in a little time symbol here, because when you have a number, it looks weird to just sandwich it between things. OK, OK, so uh, let's just put the number in front. Numbers go in front because they're simpler. x to the 2 times x, the 2 plus, I'm going to put in a 1. You don't absolutely have to do that, but it's 2 plus 1 is x cubed. OK. And then y to the 3 plus a half, well, that's not particularly nice. We'll just put it over a common denominator. That's 6 halves plus 1 half. That's 7 halves. 3 plus a half is just 7 halves. Don't write it as a mixed number like 3, 1 half next to it. That's just, that's just not going to work. 
Okay, so now it depends on what kind of answer you want. If somebody says, do not leave it in terms of fractional exponents, turn it into roots, then it'd be 1 half x cubed, those are fine, and then uh, the square root for the 1 half power of y to the 7th. But you know, most of the time, this is just, just fine and dandy. Once you get used to fractional exponents, it's like, yeah, leave it like this. But sometimes, just to, for practice, I might ask you, let's really extract the meaning out of that rational exponent. Let me show you one other way to do it. Remember this minus 1 power, we could turn this into a division problem. So it's this on top divided by what's in the parentheses here. Whoops. Just this bit. OK. And we don't even need parentheses there. OK. And so there we see the 1 half, because it's just 1 on the top divided by 2. That's the numerical part. And then we could do the top just like we did before. That's x times y to the 1 half and divided by x to the minus 2, y to the minus 3. And then we subtract exponents. So we get one, x to the 1. 1 minus a minus 2 is x to the 3, just like we had before. And a 1 half minus a minus 3 is 1 half plus 3, or 7 halves. So you get the same answer. Um, it really doesn't, doesn't matter how you do it. But it's, it's good to see that what we're doing again here is this says div divide, but these are already division, and it ends up in the end being multiplication.